Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be creating this wonderful zoetrope project inside of Adobe After Effects. It's built out of 3D layers, so we're virtually simulating what a real zoetrope does uh, in real life. I've always enjoyed this kind of analog movement where things seem to you know, go really fast, then they go in the other direction, and then they kind of normalize uh, into an animation. And while we'll be making this project specifically, there's a lot of great things that I hope you can generalize out to your own work. We're gonna be talking a lot about the speed graph. We're gonna talk a lot about camera movement. We're looking at pre-comping and time remapping. So there's a lot of great things to learn in here, so please, Stick around as we take this technique for a spin. And before we get into it, I want to let you know that all the footage we make use of in here is supplied by this tutorial sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace of high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, and my personal favorite, 360 degree images. They also have a creative store full of amazing graphical assets like lettering, icons, illustrations, patterns, textures, presets, brushes, and much, much more. Now they're most known for their mockup templates. If you're doing branding or product work, you can quickly and professionally show clients how your designs will translate into real world contexts. I really enjoy their Images 360 product. A big frustration with regular stock assets is not having an angle quite right for a certain project, but when things are captured from multiple angles and elevations, sometimes up to 144 images of a single object, those pain points are not a problem anymore. Yellow Images are hooking us up with a discount for anything you might want on their site. The first 100 people use the coupon code ECABRAMS20. We get 20% off when they use the link in the description and pick up some excellent assets from Yellow Images. This technique starts with the base animation that will be arrayed around the circle. This is a 14 frame loop of a skull spinning around. This is one of the image sequences that you can get from the aforementioned yellow images. And whatever animation you use, pay attention to how many frames it is because that's gonna be an important number as we keep going. From here, uh, I applied a few effects to get this look, and I just dropped them all up on a little adjustment layer here. We have some curves to bring in the detail, clamp down the values, and to make this a little bit more dramatic. Then I use a little find edges because I really only want to find the contours of the skull. I click a little invert button here to swap the colors around. And then finally a curves on the top there to tamp down the results. The first curves sets where the lines will be drawn, and then the second curve is to treat the results as we find those edges. Then we have this lovely frame made of a shape layer. And for our reference, I've put a little text layer on here that will show us what frame we're looking at. This expression on the text source, math.floor, and then in parentheses, time divided by this comp.frame duration, that will display the current frame number by rounding down the result of the time in seconds divided by the frame duration also in seconds. So it returns the number of the frame. Now we need to make use of this to make our virtual zoetrope. So let's drop this animation holder into a new comp and let's duplicate that 14 times, one for each frame we wanna see around the circle. And we want each of these to show the correct frame. So we go layer, time, freeze frame, and then we'll place a hold keyframe on the now revealed time remap property. We just need to set each of these to the right number. Uh, frame zero for you, frame one for you, and so on. You can do this manually, or you can use an expression like this one, where variable i is gonna be equal to the index number of the layer, subtract one, and then we're gonna say, have a look at the comp named animation holder, and then find its frame duration in seconds and multiply that by variable i. With that done, we can copy the time remap property, select the other layers, and then paste, and we can see that they're all displaying the frame we want based on their layer index number. Next, we need to array these around in a circle, and then we will want to spin that circle around as you would with a real physical zoetrope. So let's rotate all these layers appropriately and then move them outwards. We used an expression to offset the time. Let's do the same for the rotation property. We're gonna make the layers 3D. We're gonna hit R to call up their rotation. Now we're gonna drop this expression on the Y rotation. Variable I is gonna equal layer dot index minus one. We've seen this before. And then we're gonna multiply that I variable by this chunk in parentheses. It's gonna be 360 for the number of degrees in a circle divided by the number of copies that we have arrayed around the circle. And in this case, that's 14. Now, if you're happy with that, go ahead and copy the property, paste it to the other layers, and everything we need will be rotating as we want. 
But if you feel like you need this to be a variable, something you might change later, or maybe you'll swap this out for a different animation, you need this to be hooked up to a slider. So I'm gonna make a null here. I'm gonna grab the slider effect and pick whip that 14 that we typed in. I'm gonna pick whip to the slider property here, which will replace the 14 with whatever we have on the slider. In this case, I'm gonna just set it back to 14. But now if we copy this rotation property and paste it to all the other layers, this should work out fine. But now we just need to push them away from each other. I'm gonna change this up to custom view one here so we can appreciate what's going on next. And then we're gonna open up the anchor point here by selecting all of these and hitting A, which will call up that property. And we're gonna change the Z component here. Uh, right now it's at zero and we're gonna set this up to be, oh, I don't know, negative uh, 1080. That should be far enough. And look at that, we now have the ring of a zoetrope. Do make sure that your null is below all the other layers since we are referencing the index numbers in expressions. We need to maintain the layer order stack, if you will. Now the next step is to get it spinning and put a camera in the scene to look at it from our desired angle. The spinning part will be accomplished by parenting these layers to that null. So let's make that null 3D so that both of them can communicate in 3D terms and then parent all of those frame layers that we arrayed around to that null. So now we can rotate the null like the hub of a wheel. Now we also want a 3D camera in here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a 24 millimeter preset camera and we'll leave it as a two node camera, meaning I want to control both the position and a point of interest that the camera will look at. I'm also gonna turn on depth of field here so we can have a nice shallow depth of field, that'll look fun. I'm gonna set the F stops here to a nice low number, maybe like a one. And then I'm gonna set the focal distance here to be uh, something like 500. So I'll dial that in later after the camera is moving where we want it to go and then we can make it focus on on what we wanted to focus on. We should start by getting our camera and the zoetrope lined up in the kind of movement we want them to have. I find that in a single subject situation like this, we can get some nice nuanced motion by manipulating the camera and the thing we're focusing on at the same time. So I'll start by setting keyframes on the orientation of the null, as well as the position, the Z rotation, and the point of interest of the camera. Then I'll just tap the U key to only look at the keyframes that I've set. I'll also tidy up my timeline here by uh, making these layers shy and then hiding shy layers. We don't need to worry about them anymore because the null will be handling their movements. So I want the zoetrope here to go from being a circle to being on edge. So we'll use the orientation to make that happen. Easy stuff with some keyframes on the orientation, changing 90 degrees on the x-axis at the start, and then going to zero, and then back from zero to 90 degrees at the end. Look at that. Now I want to be moving the camera in there. So we'll get the position backed off at the beginning here, pushing back by back on the z-axis. That's right, I, I am a Canadian. Then we'll move closer, closer in here. And at the same time, we will have the point of interest move from looking at the middle center of this comp to focusing on the edge of the circle. And then we'll just do the reverse out at the end. The combination of camera movement and subject movement can give you a bit more nuance and lets you offset those keyframes till you get where you want. Do make sure that you're easing all of your keyframes here because you want this to be nice and smooth. And then we'll set a little Z rotation on the camera maybe, just so we have a little wobble or drifting feeling. Another way we can achieve a bit of a drift feeling is by taking these kind of first and last keyframes when we're close to the subject and modifying them just a little, pushing one of them closer, one of them further, one of them up and then one of them down. So we have a few kinds of movement overlapping here. Compound motion can look better than just moving one thing. So keep that in mind as you're doing your own camera movements. Also make sure you're offsetting keyframes from the various properties so the motion seems to overlap rather than line up and be robotic, unless that's what you're into. This is also a good time for us to dial in that focal distance so that it is nice and narrow. So we're kind of pushing the camera into that focal plane so the subject is coming into focus here but being blurry uh, at the beginning. So that's how we do the artistic motion. Uh, let's get into the science part. We need to fake the motion of a zoetrope. So we need to get this spinning at the right speed so that we can see the animation playing. Thankfully, we can use a speed graph to make things go at whatever speed we want. But what speed should that be? Well, we know the animation is 14 frames long, so we'll divide 360 by 14 for how many frames that animation is, and then multiply that result by 24, the number of frames per second that this comp is. 
and that's going to give us close to 617 degrees. I'm not going to get too hung up on the decimal points today, but this is how fast it must spin. So let's make that happen. I'm going to set a couple keyframes on the Y rotation of the null here, starting from zero. We'll run this thing to, I don't know, negative two, because we want it to spin counterclockwise. If you want it to go the other way, uh, just use positive numbers. Now we're going to enter into the graph editor and make sure you're looking at the speed graph so that we can measure and manipulate speed over time. You can change what you're looking at here with this little button at the bottom. We can manually set the speed of a keyframe by double clicking on it and then entering it in here. So let's do negative 617 since we want it to go that fast per second and in the negative direction and we'll link the in and out speed so we can be consistent having the, the incoming speed and the outgoing speed be the same. As we pull or push this keyframe around or manipulate the influence handles, you can see that the line starts to get a little bit wacky, uh, even dipping to the other side of zero, meaning that we would see this thing spin one way and then come around to spin the other way. I'm actually pretty happy with that because uh, I like that kind of motion. I like that ramping up, cranking one way, then going the other way. And that's what I was kind of looking for all along here. Now I just need this to stay consistent at the speed. So I'm going to go ahead, set another keyframe at a distant number, maybe negative 12 revolutions, and we'll hop back into the graph editor. We want to see a flat line here between these two keyframes to show that we're staying at that particular speed per second. So we may need to move this point forward or backward or change the value up or down to get this right where we want it. But once this is flat, we can see that the illusion is holding and that little bit of variation is causing a nice bit of drift that I like to see. Then we just need to bring this to a stop. So we're going to set a keyframe, uh, maybe one revolution further, uh, work the influence handles in here and we are ready to enjoy our works. It's looking pretty perfect to me. I would recommend if you're not super confident with the speed graph, that you play around with these keys and these influence handles to see what the different values do, how these impact the graph and how these impact the motion so you can get more conversational with the speed graph. As an aside, if we just dip into the value graph here, you can see that it looks very, very different. A constant speed here is this line that's on a, on a constant slope, and that slope represents the constant speed. We now have this lovely loop that is maybe suitable for some crypto art. Yes, I did make this tutorial around Halloween, but that'll do it for the tutorial. If you've had any trouble, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through. If you like learning about this kind of thing, After Effects, motion design, 3D camera stuff, Stuff, then please uh, like and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications. We get up new tutorials here all the time, so you don't want to miss a single one. If you want to see this kind of thing but live, then find me on Twitch, find me on Behance. I'm at EC Abrams on there. If you end up making something cool with this, and I'm sure you will, I would love to see it. Send it at me on Twitter. I'm at EC Abrams on there and on Instagram. You guessed it. Same thing there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.